St. Louis may have a lot to offer, but the Paris of the Midwest, I don't know. That's a nickname that's been applied to Chicago, and frankly, more often to Detroit, although that goes back a ways. The comparison to Paris usually has to do with architecture, tree-lined boulevards, and of course, art and culture. But as Patrick Murphy shows us, St. Louisans have had something lately in common with Parisians. We didn't have to go all the way to the Eiffel Tower to see it. We could find it, well, right here in our own backyard. Sculpture has always been a part of Forest Park. Usually generals on horseback, politicians in frock coats, and of course a French king. But throughout the history of the park, temporary art installations have been rare. Until 2006, when seven steel sculptures by world-renowned French artist Bernard Vinet were delivered to a space just west of the Grand Basin. That's more than 10 years after the Forest Park Master Plan called for public art to be an important element of a renovated forest park. It's, it's always interesting to exhibit the work in spaces like this, you know, very open to the public, not like uh, in a gallery where people don't dare going, they are very intimidated sometimes, you know. Here in a park like Forest Park, it's ideal because people are passing by. Sometimes they don't even know really what it's about, you know, they don't, they say, oh, what is this? You know, some people get very aggressive also. I remember one day in Paris by the Eiffel Tower, I had someone where he wanted to beat me, you know, he thought it was so terrible and insulting to put pieces like this. But uh, fortunately, many people like the work also, and it's a good way for them to discover what uh, contemporary art is about, what sculpture today is about. And if reaction among St. Louisans ranges from enthusiastic to skeptical, that's fine with Vinay. There are several levels, you know, to experience contemporary art, really, and sculpture like this in, uh, in public places. Uh, people can just look at it and uh, they will react. Some people will like it, some people won't like it, but uh, they have to know that their eye has to get uh, acquainted, as you say, you know, get used to uh, this kind of thing. When something is very interesting, they should not like it immediately because they should be disturbed a little bit. And being disturbed means one thing, which is a very positive thing. It means that you are going to learn, your culture is going to grow. So they, it's a good thing to be able to learn, to discover new things. It just makes you richer in your mind. The exhibit was not financed with any public money. Vinay and gallery owner William Shearburn arranged and paid for the installation. We wanted a space where you had interaction in terms of a bike path, a jogging path, a walking path, the street. When the Muni was going on, people were coming and picnicking over here and really using the space in a way that I've not seen the space used. This particular exhibit has already appeared in Paris, Shanghai, Hong Kong, Brussels, Rio de Janeiro and New York. Vinay's work is in many of the world's major museums and private collections. He has studios in France, Hungary, and New York. No, no, I'm just yes, he is involved in every phase and every detail of both the construction and installation of his work. He began creating art when he was 10. In his early paintings, he experimented with a variety of styles, including that of Pau Clay and the art of primitive cultures. He tried materials other than paint. Industrial painting, he called it. He found the materials he used as interesting as what he could create from them. And then discovered that mathematical descriptions of his creations were even more interesting to him than the work itself. He explored the boundaries of what was considered art creating a concert based on the sound of the Concorde Jet's engines. A film consisting purely of industrial imagery. Throughout his career, his goal has been to create a kind of art that is purely abstract and rational, that resists interpretation. Art that simply is what it is. Sculpture and paintings grounded in physics and mathematics went far beyond even the most abstract work of other artists. For years, he has explored the line. Arcs, curves, diagonals, and indeterminate lines. Lines that move in their own unpredictable directions.
So if some artists use their art to express their feelings or their worldview, Vinay has gone to great lengths to create art that exists independently of himself. That's how I ended up asking people to tell me what to do, you know, in order to put a big distance between the, the end result of the work and my personality. I had the physicist and mathematician to tell me, this is what you should exhibit. I went even so far as uh, uh, having an exhibition in Paris where I didn't even go to the opening and I, never, I didn't even know what was exhibited. And the work got sold and I never saw the work, you see, because it was selected by other people. So earnest was his search for a purely rational art that in 1970 he concluded that it was not even necessary as an artist to create. For seven years he abandoned art altogether until he again felt the need to work. For Vinay, art is a never-ending exploration leading him in new and surprising directions toward a destination he doesn't ever expect to reach. And I think for most successful artists that really make it a career, it is about the journey. You know, it's not about this end result, this culmination of a body of work or a period of work. It's about the process of making it and that fulfillment that it gives them. There is no truth in, uh, in the world, there is no truth in art, I think that, uh, that uh, all, um, all uh, lines uh, in all directions can be explored and uh, all of them uh, are interesting because uh, everything that we think, everything that we do is totally uh, you know, a pure invention from us and, uh, and there is no, we are not going in a direction to find one day the definitive uh, uh, truth, that doesn't exist. I think one of the keys with, with really any art, and I think in particular Bernard's, is it's not essential to, to figure out what's going on. To me, these things are beautiful forms in a space that activate a space in a way that I don't think the space has ever been activated. And so what you see is what you get. And to me, it's a very lovely, beautiful, powerful thing. <laughs>